Hi, my name's Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So yesterday I uh, drew attention again to this diagram which I shared at Sochi on the 4th of October 2018 that I'd drawn in the first few weeks of 2018 as the basis for the underlying structures uh, that were causing Lena. And uh, it's essentially a torus and uh, it's going around in this direction with a toroidal motion and there is a poloidal motion here. And it is able to uh, draw things in here, but also around here. But one thing that may not obvious, be obvious uh, initially is effectively what you end up with is a, an infinity that goes round and round and round and round and round. Okay, always passing through this kind of center point, but because it's kind of pushing this way, it, it'll be slightly off center. And the net effect is that some, you, you effectively got the material spinning round, but also going in a kind of infinity loop uh, but there will be a tendency to push it in that direction and um, so that fires things in this direction uh, and it gives it a kind of uh, polar nature okay so um, this is uh, I think we can turn that on there is it gonna let me turn it on so yeah this is the pull in that they kind of push out is if you look at the work of Bogdanovich on the x-rays and Shishkin on the x-rays it kind of comes out a little, little spike here and a slight off to the side um, now, if you can imagine that that would go, we, 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 we're going to talk, talk about the, um, the self-similar structure to this uh, in relation to the images that I shared yesterday with the big money shots being these two large uh, uh, Evo uh, witness marks. And what I asked people to do was to compare this with the image that I shared from Nadi and Bostick's uh, paper from 1980. Now, Nadi and Bostic, uh, certainly Bostic, worked for 25 years on this research. And the one thing that's very interesting, uh, and I ask people, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? And I have to give credit to Musical Hemispheres here, who uh, spotted one of us trying to draw attention to. Uh, and that is uh, actually spelt out in, in uh, this thing here from uh, Nadi and Bostic. So he, he's referring to this uh, one here and he says down here note hole formed by pinched electrons at the center of large D 4D ring with the spokes under surface so essentially what he's saying is the uh, D and then that's 4D for the for the size of that ring now I want to take you to some measurements uh, uh, for the uh, uh, thing that I shared yesterday, or a couple of things that I shared yesterday, with uh, some extra uh, overview. And so I want to take it to the, what I call the uh, 200 micron structure uh, here. So we'll we'll pull that up. And uh, if you recall, uh, this is kind of like a top down view of the structure. And uh, you can see actually on this one, we've also got these radial spokes coming out. Okay, and that implies to me, or implied to me, that this is also got some sub substructure. So if I turn that on, you'll see that the actual size of this is uh, 50 microns, and the overall size is 200 microns. So we have a D4D. 25 years of Nadi and Bostick's research, probably everything you could throw at that research that was available at the time and here you see in this evo strike mark the same d 4d ratio so i'm going to minimize that and then i'm going to go to this uh, large scale structure and uh, you can see here that uh, this is uh, the 200 micron shape so i'm going to uh, take that out now, when I say 200 microns, these are radii, so it's uh, actually 400 microns. So you can see the curve here. Now, it doesn't go all the way into the surface. So um, in this case, it's only partially going into the surface. The radii of the overall thing will be larger. But you can see from the curvature on here, um, if I turn it back on, uh, that is uh, uh, 200 micron radii. Now, if you look at this one, there's actually, uh, if I turn these two off, there's a curvature of one of the subsections here. Now turn that on, it's actually 20 microns, so that's 40 microns uh, diameter, 
And as you go out, it gets larger. So we've got 28. So you can imagine by the time you're out here, it's actually quite a bit larger. And now, if we go back to Nardi's image, you'll see they are squeezed into the center. Uh, larger on the outside, smaller in the center. So uh, what I had done is I'd modeled um, this in 3D. And I'm just going to take you through the, the overall structure. So. Uh, here we have our, our toroid, and this is actually a full version. Essentially, if I put it in that orientation, what you're looking at there is essentially this uh, toroid here. So, um, it's not the right ratio, but anyway, th th this is the toroid. And again, I've got this uh, D4D ratio going on here. D4D. This is... This was my concept at the time. Obviously, it's not D4D, but uh, um, you can get the idea. So, effectively, there would be a, a toroidal uh, 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 going around in here and a poloidal going around in here. And the combination of the two would end up with your spiral that, that I'm showing on here. And material that gets entrained with this as it disrupts the electron bonds would effectively go round in an infinity loop, but the infinity loop would be spinning. Okay? Material would net go into a direction and be focused into a line. Now, if I then add in something here, what I've got here, if I orient this and I zoom out a little, and I, I need to I need to use my shift key. Hold on. So I had to use my shift key to uh, uh, get that uh, into view. Now. What you'll notice is that to be able to fit these around so that the fields do not uh, like uh, interact and uh, you actually there they are some sort of separation between them, I've had to do exactly what you see both in the uh, image here where there is a, a growth in the scoop and also what you see in Nardi and uh, uh, Bostick's work from 1980 at the end of the 25 years of research. And so here we have this structure. And so effectively in, in this one, you've got material gets thrown around inside the loop, but also you get some material that gets scooped out here. Now that's still going on in here, and but the material's coming out here, but it's like a, a circular collider, isn't it? It's like a synchrotron. It's going like that. But it's also, as I said, you've got your infinity loop that's spinning around. So if you can imagine, you've got your infinity loop going around here, and, and it's spinning around, and it's going around like this. The material is going around in this kind of uh, uh, path. And you will have seen other authors uh, in other fields talking about this um, kind of uh, motion going on, this kind of procession, um, and uh, you will see books written about this, but all you need is the torus. Now I'm going to go to the next level. Um, now, you will, just, just to reiterate, I had to take this, uh, pull it out to the, this is the D4D, so we have the, the, uh, the original donut is uh, D4D, and then this one is D, 4D. Now, I'll go to the next level. Again, I'm going to have to put the, the uh, camera down and use the shift. So here we are. Uh, this is effectively, I've taken the original one, which this is D, 4D. This is D, 4D. And I've taken this and I've taken it out two Ds. So we're going to build another one. Uh, but what I've done is I, I take, you'll see even clearer on here, where the toroid here has to be squeezed in order to allow for the overall structure, which I'm going to show you here. So, uh, this is, in my view, what is going on uh, here. What did this particular track. Um, now, as someone quite rightly noted, what's the, <laughs> the possibility of uh, this getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, you you know, I'm just I'm just showing three layers here, uh, three sort of uh, levels of self similarity. So we've got the original uh, torus, then we've got our secondary torus, and then we have our tertiary torus. 
what is to stop this going on ad infinitum? Uh, who can say? But what you can recognize from this, that this is an extremely, extremely stable structure. You've got material that goes around here, but also around in its own infinity loop. But that projects material around here, which goes around in its infinity loop. And then this goes around here, and it goes around in its infinity loop. And this still grabs the material and chucks it through the center, as you can see in these images. Um, so there you go. Uh, as I walk through this entire uh, thing, this this is um, it's very. Uh, I feel very honoured to be able to be sharing this with you, um, uh, and uh, really, it's just one simple structure. And uh, this is the self-similarity part of my comments. So uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, essentially, just to go over it. Uh, it was uh, spelt out by Nardi in and uh, uh, Bostick in their 1980 paper at the end of 25 years of research. And they are referring to this particular uh, uh, torus here, this strike mark. And they are noting that the whole form by the pinch uh, at the center of the large D4D ring with spokes uh, under the surface. Um, that is borne out by every level. Uh, in fact, actually, I'll show you this, which is I've got a more top down shot here and you can see the spokes over here all the way around. Um, and I have another shot with different lighting here in uh, Photoshop. So you can see the spokes over here, the spokes here. And if I go to different uh, angles, you can see the clearer spokes here. The lighting doesn't show the spokes that way, but you can see them on the other side there. This one is, is better for showing the spokes here. Uh, and this one's very clear for showing the spokes all the way around to here. So I've, what I've done is I've used the quadrant lighting on the microscope to highlight um, the interaction with the aluminium. And so uh, from one of those shots, uh, you can see that this internal area is, is slightly distorted. And I'll come on to why that is going to be very important later. Um, but uh, and that, that's true also of uh, uh, Na Nardi and, and Bostick's some uh, work. Uh, you can, it's about where it is. So you see it's slightly fatter here and wider. And there's a bit of distortion going on. And for instance, this one is not particularly circular. So um, uh, that's because of the impact on the surface. And, and it's a very dynamic environment. Um, but uh, you can see that this, the central area kind of average is around about uh, 400 uh, and so 200, uh, uh, 200, 200, 200, this is a D4D and the outside here, well I've gone to the, the boundary of where I can see the scrape marks but as I said this uh, from the uh, side, uh, quarter on profile you can, you can see that it's, it's not uh, putting the entire diameter in there although the diameter is in fact uh, 200 microns. Um, you can see it's not going all the way into the material. So if it went into the material, you would see the full diameter of the outer torus. Um, but <laughs> this is so ridiculously consistent um, with uh, Nardi and, and, and Bostick's data. I have, uh, 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 John wrote to me and he says, I gave a sample to um, uh, uh, Ken Shoulders and uh, Ken Shoulders talked about those samples. He said, there's, there's enough data just looking at the surface of those samples uh, to realize uh, an entire lifetimes of work. And I can see where he's coming from. Um, but uh, there we go. So you have the structure in the structure in the structure here, and it's all self-consistent, self-similar. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video. This is gonna really start getting to build the understanding now. Thank you very much.